Hello. Thank you for joining, for everybody who's joining live and for everybody who's going to see this afterwards. This is the first time that I do myself a live uh, on Instagram. And I have to say in the past few months, uh, being connected through Instagram has been a very valuable tool for me as a mother and also as a singer who's used to being all the time traveling and sharing in person with people, uh, this last couple of years have been a very deep invitation to go inward and also to find other ways of connecting. And I really uh, received the message very loud from the universe that the time of telepathy was arriving to us in the form of social media that allows us to be connected from multiple locations around the planet at the same time. So I just want to honor that the divine creativity has allowed us to use these tools to be connected today and to remember together. So I am Almonis. If you are maybe familiar with my work as a singer, um, I have been singing all of my life with Lula Cruz and with Minuk, two bands that uh, I got the chance to tour the world with. And parallel to my career as a singer and performer and somebody who has recorded uh, many albums and collaborations and so on, I have been really going deep into remembering uh, the voice that happens as the result of being who we are as unique individuals and allowing the sacred intelligence of life to move and create through our own container. So I would like to share a little bit about this work and because I feel that is something that is very needed and that many people feel very called to to remember and to integrate as part of their self uh, realization process and and as part of their healing and and trying to understand why we are here so basically i was born and, and started a uh, doing music lessons since I was very young, always singing, being around music, but I never really took it very seriously um, until I started to get like some recognition about being on stage and singing and so on. And I decided to, to study in Berkeley College of Music, like being very, you know, like a professional musician, but I can say that uh, I only started to really connect with the voice as something deeper than being on a stage and singing pretty or expressing my feelings and making beautiful songs. Um, when I started making my first album in 2006, I realized that I had a very deep wound that was connected with my dad, with my biological dad being deaf, and that I needed to find ways for me to share who I was with him. So that took me to start researching really deeply within my whole, my own body and my experience, the effects of sound in the body. Because I was a singer and I was devoting my life to singing. I was gaining like a, a scholarships and traveling, touring the world, like in Japan and Mexico and things like that. And still I could not share um, who I was with my, with my father. And so, I started uh, studying and researching what happens when we sing. Other than people have an emotional response to the voice. So I really uh, came to this understanding that all of us uh, have a deep yearning that is connected to being human, uh, which is to be seen, to be heard, to be received by others, to be accepted by others. And that usually happens uh, with our parents, right? We want to, our parents to hear us, to see us, to, to get to see who we are. 
And in my case, it was very clear that a big part of that was never going to happen because my dad could physically not listen to me. He could not hear me. And so I had to face uh, this, um, this wound and this impossibility and, and look into ways to receive myself, accept myself and so on in the ways in which I wanted my father to do. And then I saw that most people uh, have a block connected to their expression because they are wanting for the world to accept them and, and see them and receive them and listen to them, but forget to do this very basic process of receiving and listening to themselves. In my case, because my father could not receive my voice and I was a singer, I had to do that process of healing that relationship uh, by giving myself that which my father could not give to me. And also finding ways to, to feel sound with my whole body. So I really started understanding that the voice is not something that happens only in the throat. It is like starts as a vibration in the throat, but it's really our whole physical body as a container, which is like the vehicle for the sound and for the vibrant energy that is the voice. And this is something that they didn't speak so much when I was studying like technical, like uh, singing classes. Uh, they would speak about the breath and the body and needing to find support and so on. But I really saw that the voice is a reflection and expresses everything that we are, everything that we believe we are, all of our traumas, all of the energies that are emotional, that are blocked, all of the energies that are stuck in the emotional system, in the energetic system, and so on. Sometimes it goes back like uh, lifetimes, right? Like we have some blocks that that are not only from this life and that there was a way to unlock this and to restore uh, the places where the vibration was not present in the body and where the resonance was uh, lacking or uh, by using our own voice to unlock that so a very big part of my awakening as a guide with sacred sound had to do with an activation and an initiation that happened in maybe 2002 and i really felt for the first time that my whole body was this instrument for a current of sound that was moving through me that i i didn't have much control over that and i could sense that there were different aspects of consciousness that were singing through me they were voices that I could possibly not make myself, even though I was studying music and technique and I had studied opera and things and jazz and I was, you know, like a professional singer. But this was something completely different, which was really the sense of channeling sound from a, a dimension within myself. And this kind of initiation, when I started feeling that my whole body was being taken to, to make sound and, and to bring forth a vibration into a room, um, started happening more and more when I was already like performing and singing. That was very uncomfortable uh, because, for example, and this is something that I, I always tell because it was very a very powerful and very scary moment. I was... Um, traveling, touring in Japan, and we would start the concert by me singing. And then after the, the band would join, but I start the concert and this thing that starts singing through me starts singing and I can't stop it. And I can feel how the energy in the room is changing. It's like I, I sense the texture. I feel this is a very healing energy, something that wants to come through. And at that time in 2001, people didn't speak about channeling or even about sound healing. So I remember looking at my bandmates being like, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what to do. I can't stop this. And, but still like using all of my body to let this come through. 
And that took me, because I didn't want that to happen to me again and again, it took me to, to research again in my, in my body as a container of energy, what was that thing that was happening when the, this channel opened so that I could have a relationship with this channeling sound that would sometimes happen on stage. And I realized that there are certain portals in the physical body that when we open them, they allow energy to run through us. And, and then we become really like a container and a vehicle for this vibrant energy consciousness that is really the voice. So the voice is not only a way to express my feelings or what I didn't tell my parents or a message that I have for the world. It's really like a, something that, that is a tool that is sacred, that is embedded and part of our innermost nature. It's part of us being humans and somehow we have forgotten that it is a tool to create. And we are using it all the time to create reality with the sounds that we make, with the words that we say. But when we really see it as this sort of crystal that is unique to each one of us and then gets kind of touched by this sacred current of life and consciousness that moves through, uh, then we feel safer in sharing who we are because our, our responsibility is just to show up and and kind of be in our container. And this thing that moves through is what wants to be born through us. So the work with the voice is very connected to unlocking our creativity and, and our creative fire and our sense of self and our like ability to, to share who we are. But it's, as I said in my case, very connected to hearing and listening to ourselves. So this is also something that is very important that very few people know that uh, that is part of the embodied voice work. And I will speak a little bit more about kind of the theory in my history for, a, you know, a couple of more minutes and then I'll get into showing some of the practices that you can do right away. But there's this important element that is connected to listening. And that is that the voice and our hearing are very deeply connected and that is something that is not spoken about that i know of in singing or voice classes so our hearing system has like a protection um, mechanism that when we hear something that is hurtful we stop listening we stop paying attention to the frequencies that happen there for example if i live close to a highway and there's constant noise, I stop literally responding to the noises and sounds that happen on that same frequency because they tire my nervous system. Or if I have an older brother or a father that is abusive to me and yells to me with a certain tone of voice, I stop listening to the voices that sound in the same frequencies. And we only produce the sounds that we can hear. We only produce the harmonics that we can hear. So it means that if I block certain sounds from my hearing environment, because I want to protect myself, it would be like closing the eyes to something that is hurtful. I stop producing these sounds with my voice. So I lose parts of my expression as I am protecting myself and like the, not listening to certain frequencies. There is a, a doctor called Dr. Tomatis that they did lots of uh, studies and research and devices uh, to help restore listening. But this is something we do with our own voice as well. So we can listen to our own voice and that restores our hearing. And that also restores the frequencies in our in our voice. So a lot of the things that we feel, oh, I cannot express this, or I feel I have a block, are connected to things we blocked from our perception as a protection mechanism. And a very safe way to do this is to receive the sound of our own voice. So we listen and we hear not only through the air, like the waves of sound that they, they push like with pressure, the the waves of air, 
but we also listen through our own bones. It's called bone conduction. So we listen directly from these bones here in the base of the skull. We receive all of the sound also from here. So a way to nourish our own voice and our own listening and to develop our voice that is very um, vital to this work is receiving the sound of our own voice through bone conduction. And that's very easy. This is a, it's Dr. Tomatis, T-O-M-A-T-I-S, Tomatis, Dr. Tomatis, the, the doctor who, who did all this research, which is absolutely amazing and, and changed my life. <laughs> I realized that people can develop their voice by developing the hearing. I don't know why they don't speak about that. So basically what we do is we want to use the body as a container of energy, opening these portals in the body through posture, and uh, we can also receive the sound of our own voice and that really nourishes our sound. It's like we cultivate the sound inside and that is what we share. We are, our only like responsibility is to be inside our container and to allow life to move through us. So then we feel less uh, I don't know, guilty or responsible, because sometimes people approach this work because they are already singing on a stage and they're not sure what they're doing there. This is this is crazy, but it happens. They're like, I'm there, I'm already seen, being seen by people, but I don't know what is it that I that I want to say. Or maybe it's somebody feels like I have a block. I just want to sing for my plants and for my pets and for myself. So when we see it in this way, life kind of takes charge and allows us to be either on a stage or singing for others or doing healing work with the voice or just uh, reawakening this power that is there uh, for all of us to enjoy and to share and that is not only connected to to singing songs but is really to allowing energy to run and to be expressed and become visible and become become audible and for us to be like I am okay being who I am and, and it is safe. So we create that safety that is usually lacking uh, by strengthening and restoring our body as a vehicle of the vibrant energy of the voice. Uh, does anyone have any question or comment until now? I get like really excited about talking, but I know some, some of you are, are live right now. So please, uh, if there's something you want to say, Type it in and I will include it in my excited uh, teaching here. <laughs> okay. So basically what we want to remember when we speak about the body as a container and a vehicle of the vibrant energy of the voice is that our body is an electromagnetic uh, body field, vibratory field. What does this mean? It means that we are constantly being fed, nourished by magnetic energy that is pulsating from the center of the earth. We can imagine, as I like to call it, the crystal core of the earth it is iron, it's magnetic, it's all the time allowing us to, it's like gravity, right? It's what creates gravity. We're not floating in space, we are grounded. And this beautiful energy of gravity when used like consciously can run through us and also create and sing through us so we want to find ways to let the magnetic energy of the center of the earth run through our system that's magnetic we are also constantly receiving nourishment and energy and from the sun from the central sun or what i call the star of our origin so this is radiating all the time, giving us energy and guidance. And it's, so when we allow the energy from the star of our origin or the central sun, which is very it's electric energy that is moving through us to run through, then we can be more like, okay, I'm just holding my container and this is like my, what I call my energetic throne. And then I'm letting this energies and move through me in a more conscious way. So what we want to do 
is, oh, oh, hold on. So what we want to do is we want to start uh, developing familiarity with how it feels to receive uh, the energy from the magnetic core of the earth as this pulsating source of energy. Mm -hmm. And also allowing the star of our origin or central sun to start moving and we allow that energy to run through us. Okay, so what we, we will get into doing something practical here. So if you can, if you're sitting down, I want you to start paying attention to the pelvis. So we're going to tilt the pelvis towards the front and the back. Yes, and we're going to remember, as I see it, that the pelvis is like a bowl, right? So it has the front of the pelvic bowl, the pubic bone, and the back of the pelvic bowl, which is the sacrum. And we have like on the sides, like the hip bones. So we're going to start remembering the pelvic bowl, which is very important for collecting our energy. When we sing, we don't want to be imagining like you have all oh, the energy is coming from your heart through the throat chakra. It's like, no, 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 no. That happens as a natural result of being in our container and like really sitting deeply in the bowl of the pelvis and, and allowing the energy of the earth and the water and the sun and the ancestors and the fire and so on uh, to move through us. But it starts with us recognizing our body as like this vessel for voice energy, right? So at the bottom of this pelvic bowl, we have a very, very important energetic place for singing, which is I don't, I don't know of any singer outside of the Taoist work that talks about this, uh, which is the perineum. So the perineum is very important for singing. And it is, if in case this is new for somebody, is in between the opening of the anus and the vagina in women, or in men, between the opening of the anus and the beginning of the testicles. So it's a very powerful, like a little heel, that it sits at the bottom of our container. And we can imagine that if we are like a, you know, probably a lot of you have heard about the, the crown at the top to connect with God and transcendence, you know, this part of the energetic system, body system. So, well, the other side of that container is the perineum. So there is no going high and then transcending when there is no magnetism and collecting and, and rooting and being in a, in a container, right? So the perineum is very important because it will allow us to connect to this grounding energy, magnetic energy that, that runs through the body when we allow it to happen in the form of gravity and of this magnetic pulsating energy that runs from the crystal core of the earth. So what we want to do is we want to start imagining that the perineum is like a pendulum. No, first we're going to imagine that it's like an eye. So we want to imagine that the eye of the perineum can look towards the back and then can look towards the front. And then maybe it wants to check out what's happening here over the window. And also the perineum, like an eye, wants to check, like I have the door over there. So we're, when we imagine that any part of our body is like an eye, we are bringing awareness to that place. We're bringing presence. We're, the, we're bringing the capacity to perceive life through embodying and being present in that part of ourselves. So the perineum. We want to imagine that it, it can look towards the front and the back in the bottom of the pelvic bowl. And now we want to imagine that this perineum is like a pendulum. So this pendulum can look in any direction. And when we are sitting, we can imagine that we are drawing from the pen pendulum of the perineum down in between like the, the feet or the other way. Yes. So we want to bring, imagine that the pendulum of the perineum can look in any direction, 
but it will always tend to look towards the crystal core of the earth core so we are you're going to use this technique for a grounding when we're doing the embodied voice work because it allows us to be very round and very flexible however we ground imagining that from the pendulum from the the perineum our energy gets reconnected with the crystal core of the earth yeah this is very important because we're going to be doing this work of opening our channel and our body so we want to make sure that we are connected to the earth that we are working with this magnetic force and and allow it to sing through us it's not only like oh this the, the earth sings through me it's like it will physically find a way to pass this transmission in the form of vibrant energy uh, when we allow it. So we start opening the first portal in the body by paying attention to the perineum as a pendulum. And we want to imagine like our hips are these, are like floating in water. So the self-image that we have for singing is very important. We don't want to imagine that we are very thin, like a straw, but we want to really imagine like our body is very round. Like we have big hips. I always say, oh, it's so good to have Colombian hips for this practice because you really want to imagine like you have big booty, <laughs> big men and women, because that's going to be a way to ground your energy. So we want to imagine like the, our hips are floating in water. One way to do this is to imagine like every hip is like a floaty, right? So it's like floating in water. We can do either standing or sitting, like a figure of eight from the hips. Yeah. And at the bottom of this kind of like figure of eight of the hips, is the pendulum of the perineum. So we want to develop this sense of being round and being collected. And when we start moving the hips and seeing them as floating in water, we are allowing the energy of water to run through the body. So everything that will be moving in spirals, in waves, that will be more similar to the energy of the voice than imagining like a flute that is just like shooting like a straight ahead. Yeah. Then we want to imagine also in this image of the body, we have the perineum like a pendulum looking down towards the crystal core of the earth. Then we have the floating hips. And we want to imagine our spine like a serpent. So it is articulated, soft, fluid. So I always say this, a flexible voice comes from a flexible spine. It's very important. So all of the movements that we can do, imagining that our spine is a serpent, will help our voice be flexible. All of these can be worked just by paying attention and um, visualizing or envisioning our body as a container of energy. So basically the embodied voice, uh, what it does is like it shares a language of images that share this experience of allowing energy, the vibrant energy of the voice to move through. So we have the the spine like a serpent you can try that sitting down or standing on your daily life and we want to start what i this this process that i call melting the mask so very connected to finding our authentic expression is allowing ourselves to not always have a pretty face and a pretty expression so it's allowing ourselves to make ugly faces you know so we're going to be cultivating our true embodied expression by massaging the face i'm going to make really ugly faces for all of you sticking my tongue out 
and doing this process of melting the mask. So melting all of this muscular tension that is connected to how we want to be perceived by others and being like, I don't care, okay? Not only to release tension, but to really see that this deep yearning and desire that we have of being able to really share with the world who we are has to do with ways in which we have kept ourselves captive by trying to be loved, by being like, oh, if I really had a good voice, I would sing in front of people. It's like, you, who cares? But it's not about singing in front of people and having courage. It's about allowing energy to create through you. And that energy has a consciousness, a sacred healing quality that will move through the body to inhabit and to restore because that's uh, the way sound works when it's not made to impress somebody else it's just made as an expression a true expression of who i am then this the container would be like oh this is better feeling like i'm round is better i'm not keeping a, a nice face ah it's better it's like a relief okay so we want to start making very ugly faces we're going to move the shoulders a bit like <laughs> very very beautiful doing very ugly faces we all are i guess when we allow that expression and we move the other way around we're going to start letting the head drop to the side letting like the weight of the head drop this is going to be very important and as we let the head of the head drop, we continue inhabiting the hips as this floaties. Okay. And this way. Okay. And now we're going to start making a sound that is one of the uh, there's like base two basic, very, very powerful sounds that we can make every day to cultivate our true expression. The first one is humming. Humming is the mother, the mother sound. It's like it contains all of the other sounds inside. So the way in which we practice humming for embodied voice is we want to have a spacious mouth and the lips are softly touching. So what we're doing is we're creating inside A vibration and the way in which I, I like to see this humming practice is like we are tasting our own voice so we want to engage our hands and bring them close to try to feel the vibration that we are doing So the focus will be on tasting, savoring, and the sensation, the feeling. It's not about an output, not about singing, not about doing scales. It's about cultivating an inner vibration. And for now, humming with these closed lips is very, very powerful. Taking our time to breathe in. And if you see, I'm always letting the weight of the head move towards the front, to the side. So most of us have a lot of tension collected here, connected with our desire to be seen and to be heard and to do it right. So it's like we live in the top front of our container, right? Where the, where the face is, making the good face, keeping a lot of tension, being very, you know, contained. So we want to do a, a lot of this and using also the sound that we are producing inside to sense the sides and the back and the bottom of our body as a vehicle and instrument of the voice so that we are not only um, projecting from the front 
This is also something that very few people know, and it's that sound is not a wave that goes like this. This thing that we see is always like a graphic representation of the waves, but waves in reality, in nature, made by our body, are like bubbles. They're spheres. So, of course, like with a guitar, where we have an opening, like the, like the hole in the body of the guitar, there's more sound that goes towards the front. But the whole body of the guitar is resounding and expanding sound in all directions. So sound, more than like a wave that is made like this, is like a bubble. So when we remember this, making sound, with humming, sliding up and down, sensing, we will probably start uh, awakening the sensation and the resonance in different parts of the body that are not only the throat or not only the main resonance spaces that are the chest and the sinus and the skull, but also the back and the sides. Like when I make sound, I can feel it all the way down into my yoni and my pelvis. And that's the way it should be because it means that my whole body is engaged same as it is with a guitar. It would be as if you have a guitar, it's only a little bit of, of the guitar that's made of wood and then the rest is like cement. So it's like we want to, to be in this very like kind of um, like jellyfish state um, and seeing the body as being very round as a vehicle container instrument of voice energy. And the other very powerful sound that you want to be doing is not only humming, but something that are like uh, is used in every voice class, technical voice class in the world, which is like the, the thrills with the lips or sirens or so what we're doing is we're creating a vibration with the lips it's very common that at the beginning this sound breaks when we start doing it. A lot of people are like, oh, they can't keep it. You just need to keep going until it starts being longer. It becomes longer when the vibration is more regular. It means that the flow of air and the column of air, or the, the pressure, is more regular. So it's not... And also when all of these muscles are relaxed enough and available. So it's a very, very, you don't need to care about what the neighbors say uh, or not having time. You can do this doing the dishes. You can do this like waiting for the train. It helps a lot to bring the fingers here. For some reason, it brings like a, a relaxation and a sense of continuity to the sound. So if you still can't do this sound, you need to make it, try it every day. And if you already can't make this sound, you want to be using it all of the time. This is the best way to warm up the voice. And it also, it's sliding up and down. So it's very useful and potent to slide either with humming or with instead of singing scales because the larynx that is like making the sound when the, when the air blows through something like this, the vocal folds that are the vocal cords are having to adjust all of the time the pressure and the positioning according to how high or how low, how open, how much volume. It's like super responsive. So when we make very long, wavy, going up, sliding up, down type of sounds, the larynx is having to adjust all of the time to doing high and doing low, and we have no idea what's, what note we're doing, which is, for now, really, really good because we're focusing on how it feels and allowing the body, when we bring the fingers to the face and when our focus is there, to, to really be present with what's happening. 
because a lot for us in singing is getting a message across or singing my prayer or reaching the note and it's like it's really not about that but that that is like a not letting us be present in in the sound that is happening that's when this like listening and paying attention and receiving ourselves becomes so real and tangible so every day you want to be paying attention to the pendulum of the cranium floating hips the spine like a serpent letting go of the weight of the head melting the face of like the mask in the face and this is good not only for singing but also for communicating with other people so if you try this before you need to speak with somebody having a difficult conversation or do a live or whatever it is that you use your voice for it will start allowing the energy to run through your container and for us to remain present and the full container not only in the top front so remember i said we are connected and being like nourished constantly by the magnetic core of the earth and that's why we're allowing this pendulum of the perineum for energy to run through and for energy to run through from the central sun or the star of our origin down there is this very simple beautiful practice which is saying yes with the head and pelvis so this is something that is going to let you express yourself and listen to others way better so you can try this which is saying yes with the head and pelvis and imagining that there is this wave that moves through the spine like a serpent so we want to be saying yes with the head and the pelvis and it's like we are allowing these higher dimensions this dimension of the central sun or the star of our origin this energy this electric energy has a chance to run through our own central channel which is the spine and also the energy from the magnetic core of the earth under us that is keeping us and nourishing us with this magnetic pulse can also move through our container. So we want to be doing We want to imagine like we are a jellyfish and we also want to be doing the so more and more your body will probably be like ah oh, this is a nice uh, state to be in so this is not for singing only but we want to develop and cultivate a state of availability for the energy to run through our system so that when we go to sing we know how to remain in our energetic throne because most of us we leave our throne when we need to sing and you see it in the bodies complete the posture completely shifts or we collapse we close here so a lot of that can be worked with by paying attention to the pelvic bowl i'm not present in here how i want to be loved how i want to be seen i'm here i'm here with myself being sustained by the core of the earth being nourished and being like also receiving this beautiful radiation and then i just i'm just allowing this to move through right and i remain present and i remain perceptive to what's happening it's not like i'm channeling and i have no idea where i am or, or who spoke through me no 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 it's just like full presence embodied receptive yeah so self perception so and we want to always be you see that i always have my hands here right so when we start moving with the sound up sliding up sliding down and so on my hands start to accompany that movement of the voice and that perception with the fingers facing myself because this is not about me for now singing to others or healing somebody with my voice this is about me getting to know my body as a container of this vibrant energy that is running through me and we will start seeing like oh when i go low i feel the vibration 
lower in my in my body. So the way to start being able to tune better, to be in tune, to to match the tone is to have a perce perception not only from our hearing but from where the sound is happening in my body so that's why we want to start letting the hands move and accompany the sound with the movement and it can also be with humming it can be with Or it can be with a very easy vowel, which is U. The U is, is one of the closed vowels, so it's it takes less air and it's usually easier to make when we want to slide. So I call this like a shower with the U. So we breathe in. And I want to slide up and down with this O. And again, you see the hands are not facing out. They are facing in so that I can listen and receive the sound of my own voice through bone conduction. This is very important. Ooh. Ooh. And if you see, I'm also remaining in this jellyfish state, yeah? So these very basic practices are things that you can do even if you already sing, because it's about having this awareness of the pelvic bowl as being the main container of your energy. So we can really like, like uh, root ourselves and ground ourselves in this watery container of the pelvic bowl floating hips and being very like rooted and grounding through the perineum as a pendulum down and then we start allowing the vibrant energy to move through the spine so there's a lot that we can do to cultivate our embodied voice without even making sound which is being present and seeing our, our body as an instrument and vehicle. The hands and arms are more like floating. As you see, I always have like space in between my trunk and my arms because I'm also letting this vibration of the voice grow towards the side and the back and the front and above. So this is always the sound is always a sphere, a bubble. And I say yes with the head. And yes, with the pelvis, so this is a movement that is sort of a, a figure of eight between saying yes with the head and the pelvis. And the hands facing myself. One very powerful practice to reconnect with our own voice is to look at our own hands and say yes. Yes, with the head and the pelvis. I say yes with the head and the pelvis because if I only say yes with the head it would be like the, the wave doesn't continue through my spine. Or if I say only yes with the pelvis, we'd know how that feels, right? That it's not connected to the higher centers. Saying yes with the head and the pelvis while looking at our hands. For some people, it's very hard to look at their own hands. And what we're doing is we're reconnecting, we're saying yes to this sacred, vibrant energy that is there to move through us. We don't, I don't need to be even singing out in front of people to be able to reconnect with, with this power. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gracias, Constanza. So we want to do this and we're going to start receiving the sound of our voice. This is going to be the last very key like secrets of something that I've discovered that is called the pure expression of the vowels. So we make sound 
mostly in vowels. The vowels are the essence and the soul of the sound because they are, it's like this very beautiful image. It's like if the voice is a river, the vowels are the water in the river. They are the vibrant energy of the voice, are the, the vowels. And the consonants would be like the, the bed and the rocks in the river, right? That, that gives like shape to this vibration that is produced in the vowels. We produce it in the vowels and we also produce it in these resonant consonants like M, M, and N. The other consonants are a way to stop that flow and to shape that flow like T, P. They don't have a resonance per se, right? So I discovered that the way in which we make the vowels is very connected to our ideas about who we are and what we think is a good voice, what we think will get us loved. So for example, if somebody sing, tells me, sing an ah, oh, I can do a very weird sound. That's not my embodied voice. That's not my real voice. That's something that I do because I think I'm supposed to sing like that, but most people make sound like that. Even singers, it's, it's really crazy. So I discovered that there are certain like pure expressions of the first main vowels that we use in Latin or Spanish, A, E, I, O, U. The other vowels are like combinations of those. And that when we find the real sound of these vowels in our body, we find the real sound of our voice. Oh, I don't sing like this because I think it's good. <laughs> so many people do that. It's okay, you know, we want to be loved, we want to be seen, we got it wrong, basically. <laughs> and we forgot that there's like our body naturally knows how to make sound. So for example, the pure expression of the ah sound is like ah, like you remember something. This is something that I've tried in four continents until now. And all of the bodies make the same sound when they remember something or realize something, some variations, but it's like, ah, 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 ah. So to find the pure expression of my ah sound, I don't think about singing, I don't think about notes. What I want to do is I want to find the pure expression of the of the vowel so in the embodied voice work i've discovered these like pure expressions the first one which is very easy for anybody to do is the ah so we want to do the pure expression of the ah sound looking at our own hands while saying yes i'm looking at my hands ah i'm receiving the sound of, of that voice looking at it Little by little, you'll start feeling the vibration of the voice. Ah, this is the ah of remembering, of realizing something. This is the real sound of the vowel for all of us. Ah, ah, very important to continue allowing for energy to run through the central channel from the star of our origin and the magnetic core of the earth by saying yes with the head and pelvis, looking at my own hands, recovering this like amazing uh, creative tool that is my voice and saying yes. Ah. So any of you trying it now and can start sensing like you feel a texture or you feel energy or it feels, feels warmer or tingling with the hands. Ah, 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 ah. So little by little, we start receiving the sound of our own voice and this sacred energy that wants us to be embodied and be full and be a vessel for the divine to create through us, we will start moving the hands. And this is something that happens naturally. I've been teaching workshops since, I don't know, 2003 to thousands of people. It always happens. You just need to keep on doing it if, if it's taking longer for you. 
Ah, the voice starts, the energy of the voice starts wanting to move with the hands. It's like we're spreading this beautiful vibration that starts being something tangible, which is not ah, 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 ah. That's me trying to sing, me trying to sound pretty, me trying to be loved. This is me remembering who I am as a, as a creator and allowing the energy to run through me. So we want to be doing this process of receiving the sound of our own voice with a pure expression of the A, ah, which is remembering. If you can take note, I will be giving the other, the four expression of the other vowels. Oh, like surprise. Oh, so we want to receive this, the true, pure expression of the vowel. Oh, which is of oh, as I keep on saying yes with the head and pelvis, and I receive the sound of the voice with my own hands. Ah. Ah, like I remember something. Oh, oh, like a surprise. Then we want to do, ooh, like resonant pleasure. It's not, oh, no. Ooh, ooh, same thing. I receive the sound with my own hands. The A sound is like we're calling somebody who's far away. A, A. So I receive the sound of the pure expression of the A sound, which is like calling somebody. A. Looking at my own hands, saying yes with the head and pelvis. And then E. E, e. So the E would be like um, like throwing a dart of a silk thread from the third eye. E, 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 e. So we have these five pure elemental vocals, elemental sounds. They are formed by the shaping of the larynx. And the larynx copies the forms of our hands. That's why you say e, o, u, a, e, i. So when we actually engage our hands in making sound, we are shaping it directly in the larynx. So engaging our hands to receive the sound is absolutely amazing to receive the sound of our own voice and feed ourselves with the vibration and the perception of our own voice and this sacred current of sound that starts moving through us when we open the container and see it will start to move around the body. This is something that always happens. So we are running out of time here. Um, thank you for tuning in for the ones that are seeing this live and for the ones that are going to catch this later. There's so much here and it's very easy to, to do it. There's, this is not difficult, but it takes like believing uh, in ourselves as creators of reality and knowing that there are very easy ways to, to remember this. So I will be offering a few uh, in-person uh, immersions and trainings and so on. So you can go to Sonido Sana if you want to keep on learning more. I will also be sharing here freely on these platforms because everybody should be, should be doing this. Everybody should remember this. So let me know how it goes. And if you benefited from this, spread the word. And, and more than anything, take it in so that the world can benefit from creation that happens specifically only through your own containers. Thank you so much. And may all of the beings that are supporting this transmission 
be with you to help us remember that we can create our own reality and and really be instruments for the divine thank you so much gracias